Welcome to CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives, the only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening, and now, enjoy the show. As your guide into the world of the macabre, I have led you along paths where we have encountered all manner of the abnormal, from apparitions to creatures from outer space. It is a shadowy land that we explore and where we come face to face with phenomena that we ourselves may have dreamed about or experienced. So beware and follow me with care. Now, if you will look where I'm pointing, you will see a small room in the Hotel Pont Neuf in Paris. It is after dinner, and the man who has entered the room is an American newspaper man named Joe Smith. What the devil? Don't move, Mr. Smith. What do you mean, breaking into my room and going through my things? Oh, go! Oh, Mr. Smith. I don't want to shoot you. That would defeat my purpose. Which is? To find out how much you really know about Marco Hestos. And the fortune he left behind? Our mystery story, Family Album, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Roy Windsor and stars Paul Hecht. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. In his search for news, a reporter has the curiosity of a cat and the imagination of an inventor. He is constantly asking why. If he cannot explain why something has happened, and if he is turned aside with a no comment, he has only one recourse. Consider what facts he has, fit them into a pattern, and then imagine the missing pieces. Then he writes his article. We accept his facts, and we indulge his speculations. Joe Smith is an established reporter with a byline on a New York daily. At four o'clock on a rainy afternoon. Joe Smith. Oh, hi, Frank. Who? Are you sure? Great. Hey, that's big, pal. I'm on my way. Ned, hold the first page. This better be good. What have we got? Frank Brady's got it. Your detective, buddy? Yeah, they just found Marco Hestos. What? They fished him out of Pelham Bay. He's in the morgue downtown, and it's, it's an exclusive. Brady, you sure? He says, absolutely. Okay, what are you waiting for? Get Charlie to dig out everything he can about Marco. I'll need it for background. Photographer? The police will have shots. I'll take some of my own. It's a scoop, Ned. Yeah, the most wanted international criminal. Charlie, I'll be back in an hour. Order up some sandwiches and coffee. Yes, Mr. Editor? I want everything we have in the obit files on Marco Hestos. You know what's he done now? He got himself done in. Marco? Mm-hmm. The man's indestructible, Ned. He has been, but the police have just fished him out of Pelham Bay. Lieutenant Brady tipped Joe, and he's on his way. I'm holding the front page. Get Marco's obit file. I'll type up what facts we have, but uh, there aren't many, Ned. The guy's been suspected of everything from murder to bossing a dope ring, but he's only arrested once. Yeah, as a spy for East Germany. And they spy him. Yeah, it's hard to believe he's dead. Makes me sad. Wipe your tears and get to work. Found him Pelham Bay, huh? <laughs> Marco deserved better than that. Off to Riviera or Capri, not Pelham Bay. He was my favorite anti-hero. Yes, sir, he was a dandy. The world has lost its number one skunk. And that's unfair to skunks. <laughs> It's good, Joe. Real good. Oh, it's better than good. And that's a good shot of Lieutenant Brady. I can't say much for the one of Marco Hestos. That bloated face could be anyone. <laughs> Brady sure that guy's Marco? You've read my story, Charlie. How long dead, Joe? Well, the medic couldn't say. Several days to a week or so. The clothing, as I wrote, is French-made. 
No identification for the money belt, but everything in it is Marcos. His visa, my ID, notes, the writing, Frank's, everything. Okay, Charlie, it's all yours. We print. Right. Feel kind of drained, my boy? Sure. <laughs> it's been a rough few hours. Feel up to a good dinner? Oh, I had half a sandwich. No, no, no. I mean a meal. This scoop has given me an idea I'd like to talk over with you. Okay. What is it? Not here. I've talked it over with the publisher, and it has his blessing. But it's really up to you. Well, anything's okay with me, Ned. Any assignment. Just uh, don't take me off the street, huh? That's where I'm alive. The street is where it all hangs out. Hmm. But not just in little old New York. Well, do we order, or are you going to tell me first? The death of Marco Hestos is a big story, Joe. Yeah, it fell into my lap. We have Brady to thank for that. He's been a good friend. Joe, let me ask you a question. Who was Marco Hestos? Now, well, skip the obvious. An international criminal, a spy, head of a drug smuggling ring, an attempted assassin. He ranged all over Europe. But who was he? Nobody knows. Well, somebody must. He was born... And now he's dead. For 30 years, he lived by crime. I want to trace that man's history. I see. You're an investigative reporter. What I want is the truth about the man's life, a biography written in installments as you track him down. Yeah, that, that's a good idea, Ned. We know that with famous or infamous persons, the public has a great curiosity about them. And not just as headliners, but as human or inhuman beings. This guy was the worst. How come? I want you to string his life together, an article a week. It could be prize-winning stuff, Joe. I'm for it, Ned. The problem is, though, where to begin? France, Surete. I'll have our Paris correspondent arrange a meeting with the head guy. And you take it from there. Write it first person. Take the reader along on Marco's odyssey and crime. Okay. And uh, watch your step. What? what? Think. Think, Joe. You're going snooping. A snoop is never popular, especially among crooks. Marco's dead. But some of his former pals are still alive. You think they want their names in the paper? It is uh, guesswork, Monsieur Smith. Marco is questioned many times as a suspect, and he identifies himself as a Greek, then as an Albanian, again he is Yugoslav, or a citizen of France. All lies, not seulement. We do not know where he was born. Well, someone must know. Peut-être. It is my advice that you go first to Marseille. It was there several years ago we exposed the smuggling band. Marco and Etienne Brissard escape. Is Brissard still at large? No. Soon after his escape, he is found uh, stabbed in the chest. It is not hard to explain. Uh, Brissard demanded money from Marco, and he killed him. The knife was Marco's weapon. Uh, that's how Marco died. Stabbed in the chest. Oui. <laughs> and to me, that is odd. So, uh, I talk with the police in Marseille. No, they may be of help, but I doubt it... Marco assuredly was not French. It is the opinion of this writer that he was of uh, a Mediterranean origin. Uh, a, a Turk, perhaps. Well, there is Cyprus. Uh, it is not to be overlooked. If Marco was a Turkish Cypriot, someone may tell you so, but uh, with reluctance. Marco was uh, not a credit to his people. Uh, Monsieur Kennyway, I have to begin somewhere. Uh, I'll fly to Nicosia. This uh, is a dangerous investigation, Mr. Smith. <laughs> so my editor told me. Yes, he is wise. There are men at large for whom we still search. Uh, some may wonder why an American newspaper man is digging into the past of Marco Hestos. When you dig, you may discover information that has escaped the police of many countries, including your own. We think it was to America that Marco went after Marseille. You really think some former associate of Marco's might try to stop my investigation? Well, it is possible. For two reasons. First, you might expose someone who wants to conceal the past. Uh, second, 
What if someone thinks that you have information that could be valuable to them? What could I know that might be valuable? Marker was rich. <laughs> Where is his money? Huh. I haven't the vagueness. Ah, so you say. I believe you. Others may not. Yeah. If someone thinks you possess this information, you will want it. Then I'll raise the question in my first article. Me? I'll include a question about what happened to Marco's fortune. I uh, would like to discourage you from this investigation. You report that Marco is dead. Yeah. He was an evil man. I would forget him. Study our files. From them, you can write your biography. I'll study them, and thank you, but my job is to fill the gaps between the facts. And now that's what will make my story. As you please. I wish you good fortune, of course. Uh, thank you. Thank and you for your time. The surete will follow you. Whether you like it or not, your life is in our hands. What's your opinion, Charlie? Hey, it's a good first installment. Good picture of Andre Conway, of the Surete Files. Yeah, it's good. But it needs an ending with more punch. Oh, you read too much fiction, Ed. Look, the story's got a theme, the search for the identity of Marcos Hestos. And it's got a hook, what happened to Marcos' money. I think it's a good start. The hook is good. Conway's idea, probably. It relieves me. I don't want anything to happen to Joe. You talked to him? Yeah, this morning. He was leaving for Marseille. But they aren't? I know, I know. He was going direct to Nicosia. Changed his mind. Let me see. It's uh, midnight there. Joe said he might have a paragraph about his arrival. I'm waiting around for his call. I'll hang around. He might need a writer. No need to. We've got another day before we print the magazine section. If Joe's got a few more lines, he'll dictate them to me. Just the same. I'll get us some coffee and keep you company. You sound kind of nervous. I am nervous. <laughs> Break your neck. No, no, Monsieur Smith. I am not the man who attacked you. Come, I will help you to your feet. Someone, someone came out of the shadows. Hit me in the back of the head. Really? It was very swift. When the darkness falls, it is unwise for anyone to come to the waterfront of Marseille. Who are you? Gustave. Hey, did you see the man attack me? We. Oui. And you frightened him away, huh? I drove him to the edge of the pier and he jumped into the water. I advise you not to walk down here at night. Yeah. Hey, you saved my life. Oui, oui. Now, you return to the hotel, yes? Yeah, I'll report this to the police. There's no need to do that, monsieur. Uh-huh. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. Then we say no more about it, oui? Okay. You will forget me and uh, my name, which is not my real name. You have had a narrow... Evasion, how you say, escape. Uh, oui. Almost your body was found in the arbor. Yeah. The going gets rough. So you were told. You cannot afford to be careless. Adieu. And bon chance. Gustav. Now, that's not his real name. You know who he works for, but uh, I don't want to say so in the story, okay? Yeah, yeah. Joe... Forget the investigation and come home. You're not a detective. I don't want you knocked off. Uh, not on your life, Ned. This is getting exciting. Uh, I'm leaving here in the morning. You come home, damn it. I'll file the next installment from Cyprus. No, Joe, I want you back in New York. So long. I get the impression Joe won't obey orders. What's the matter with that fool? Nothing. His travelogue has turned into a dangerous adventure. Uh, <laughs> expect Joe to dodge that? He could be killed. Sure he could. A reporter takes that kind of risk. You know that, Ned. Well, what am I going to do? I'll tack this closing paragraph to the first installment, and we run it as planned. It was you who wanted an ending with more punch. Yeah, yeah. I figured on some excitement, but not on a murder attempt. Let's hope it's the last. It won't be. Crime reporting is a risky business. The underworld fears the printed word even more than it fears the police. It is hard to hide from a story in the press. 
Words are a hoodlum's intangible enemy. Joe Smith's attempt to reconstruct the history of Marco Hestos has already drawn one murder attempt on his life. When he reaches Nicosia, oh, but that's when I return with Act Two. Marco Hestos is an enigma, an international criminal found dead in Pelham Bay, New York. What heredity and environment produced his evil, destructive career? That is what Joe Smith has been sent to Europe to reconstruct. It's a few weeks later. In the newsroom in New York, Ned Powers puzzles over Joe's second article. Another good installment, Charlie. They've all been good. So is the readership. They've got suspense. Marseille, Nicosia, Smyrna, Athens, Belgrade, and now Paris again. You know something, Charlie? I keep going back to that report Joe filed from Nicosia. Hmm? Why, why would he write that Marco's money might be his? But I took that out of the report, remember? But it made no sense. I asked him about it. He said he'd explain later. Maybe. And he wasn't referring to reward money. There is none. That reference bugs me. Why would Joe say that Marco's money might be his? I can't imagine. It was in Nicosia that Joe... Nah, no, nah, no, it's too far-fetched. <laughs> That's where it began, Ned. That's where Marco Hestos was born. It was all too easy. Over the years, the police failed to identify Marco, and along comes our Joe Smith and finds out that Marco was a Turkish Cypriot. Mm -hmm. That's too easy. It's too pat. Why would Joe succeed where the police failed? Just a lucky break. He found that relative of Marco's, that old woman in the hills. He wrote about that, you remember? Vaguely, I admit. But... Vaguely is right. Obscurely. That old woman and her family have been up there in the hills all their lives. She never came forward with this information before. People clam up with the police, Ned. You know that. Well, what about the name? Hestos isn't Turkish. It's Greek. Joe wrote that Hestos was a Turk. Why didn't he give us his real name? Yeah. He didn't send us pictures of the old woman, either. My guess is he's protecting her. Marco had nothing but enemies. Uh, there could be reprisals against the family. Yeah, that's possible, but it's not satisfactory. What the devil happened to Nicosia? Down here, Gillison, when he returns from Paris. He's withholding a lot. Marco's real name, pictures, the reason he's changed this point of view. He's returning this week? Hopefully in one piece. Charlie, let me try something on you. Mm -hmm. I warn you, it's pretty fantastic. Okay, let's hear it. We began with a question. Who was Marco Hestos? Okay. Now, ask yourself this. Who is Joe Smith? What the devil? What do you mean by breaking into my room and going through my things? I'm... No, no, Mr. Smith. I don't want to shoot Joe. It would defeat my purpose. Which is? To find out how much you really know about Marco Hestos and the fortune he left behind. You, uh, you've been in Marseille in the last few weeks, Mr. Uh... Hunter. No. Nicole anticipated that his name might appear in your article, so he acted to prevent it. Your mention of him is one of Marco's former associates forced him to leave Marseille. An impulsive man. He, uh, survived his jump from the pier. So I have been told. And who are you? An enemy who could be a friend. Then uh, lower that gun. It makes me nervous. Oh, of course. Thoughtless of me. Why have you ransacked my room? Oh, I regret its appearance. I did not expect you to return so soon from dinner. Yeah. What were you looking for? Information. I followed you all over Europe. And did you find what you sought? You keep thorough notes. You're fortunate to be alive, Mr. Smith. No, I did not find what I expected... But now that we've met, I want you to tell me what you've concealed. If you cooperate, you will live and become rich. If you don't... Go on. Many of Marco's circle... <laughs> Shall we continue to refer to him as Marco? Huh? Oh, well, why not? Many of them have been forced to scatter. Your pen did that. Good. I hope the Surete rounds up all you rats. 
You're a big one, I suspect. I was a business associate of Marco's. Part of the Marseille smuggling gang. Yeah, I've heard your name. Marco absconded with a fortune. I want my share. Yeah, if that chance you'll ever get a cent. But it exists. And we know where it is, don't we, Mr. Smith? We? Gee, I haven't a guess where it might be. Cyprus, Greece, Switzerland, even France. In your first article, you indicated that you might know where it is. Sure I did. A pure speculation. I wrote that to protect myself. Now, if Marco's hoodlums thought I knew, others would know. My editor, for one, the police. Now, that put the money out of reach, including yours, Mr. Hunter. I don't believe you, Mr. Smith. Tough. That's the truth. You know where the money is as well as I do. Okay. Tell me. After we reach an agreement... What's your proposition? You know where the money is, and I'll tell you why you know... How can you complete your series of articles without a smashing conclusion, eh? <laughs> You've done quite a remarkable job of tracing by her. Who? Aha. Uh -huh. Telltale slip, Mr. Smith. You have traced Bayer from his birth in Nicosia to the United States. And to his death. Now, in your last article, you must report the final truth about the man. His real name, his new name, his occupation in the United States... And where he has his money. You have that information. You have to have it. All the story is incomplete. I have none of that information. You read my notes. Uh, you have it in your head. Can you deny that you uh, know Marco's real name? <laughs> no, of course not. Uh, you're talking fiction. No, not fiction. Fact. I want to share in your final investigation. I'll even share some of Bayer's money with you. You know where the money is hidden? Just as you do, yes. I'm sorry, I don't. If I did, I wouldn't want any of it. Oh, that's foolish. You have some claim to it, Mr. Smith. You must realize that, of course. I am a fair man. Yeah, I'm returning to New York in the morning. So am I. I uh, won't forget your face. I have several. Once I have my share of the money, you may write anything you like about me. I'll vanish. The money's in New York. I need your help to obtain it. Frankly, I'm afraid to act alone. If you refuse to ally yourself with me, I'll have to kill you. Well, either you're crazy or I'm dense. And why are you afraid to act alone? I mean, if you know where Marco left his money, why not just go there and grab it? <laughs> Tell me how. Well, just take it. From a bank account. Uh huh. so that's where it is. Yeah, that does present a problem, doesn't it? Uh, I don't think you'll ever get the money, Hunter. But we will, Mr. Smith. A check requires a signature. That's yeah, perfectly true. And dead men can't write checks. You still don't understand, do you, Mr. Smith? <laughs> Either you're a superb actor or you really doubt now the truth. Well, take care of yourself. I'll call on you in New York. <laughs> If uh, you please to describe the man, Mr. Smith. Well, he's about 5'6", slight, narrow face, ferret-like, yeah. very calm and self-assured. He didn't seem deadly to me. Uh, we know him, of course. And now he refers to himself as uh, Mr. Hunter? Uh, yes, Monsieur Kenway. Uh, he has been arrested on minor charges, but we have not been able to hold him. He said he followed me all over Europe. We? Oui. And we have followed him without any reason to detain him. He is a man of many faces and names, but he is not a killer, <laughs> except in self-defense. Unlike Marco, now, he enjoyed killing. He still does. I beg your pardon, Mr. Conway? Mon cher Monsieur Smith, do you doubt that Marco is still alive? I saw his body after... No, was... no, 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 no. It is a profound mistake that has been made uh, many times before... Marco is reported dead. Then he reappears. Uh, Monsieur Hunter spoke the truth. He wants money from Marco. That means Marco is alive. But uh, the identification, the clothing... Oh, sorry, Marco Hester's. That kind of thing is easy to arrange. Then who's the dead man? The one the police fished up? Someone like Hunter... Someone who dared to confront Marco to blackmail him? Well, that makes the police look stupid. Oh, I disagree. Why should the New York police not think they've recovered the body of Marco Hestos? The uh, face was uh, disfigured, we? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but the other evidence 
convinces the police that the man is Marco. We make mistakes, especially when we deal with so clever a man as Marco. You really think he's alive? Hunter is no fool. Yeah. Well, what do you advise me to do? It requires uh, strong nerves, Mr. Smith. I would, um, how do you say it, uh, play out of this train. Meet with Hunter? He will lead you to Marco. <laughs> Well, that's it, Ned, all of it. And Hunter's here in New York? He said he'd be here. If I get knocked off, you got the whole story. <laughs> the last installment. I don't want the last installment. You're off the assignment as of now. I mean it, Joe. This becomes a police matter. Now. What can they do about it, Ned? <laughs> what have they got on Hunter? Say they pick him up. He'll deny Joe's story. And what about Bayer? Uh, I mean, Marco. I mean, only Hunter can lead us to him. You began to say buy something, Joe. Something you held back? Well, yeah. All right. Let's have it. Something to do with Nicosia? Yeah. Ah, we wondered about that article, Joe. No name, no picture. I don't believe it myself, but... Well, it's possible. Who was buy something? Bayar. Kemal Bayar. Marco's real name. Why did the old woman in the hills tell you, Joe? Because, it's crazy, because of my marked resemblance to him. Now, look at me. I am Joe Smith, right? But that, that's a common American name, but I am not your conventional Joe Smith. I'm dark-skinned, I, I have black hair. I was adopted when I was a year old. Know anything about your background, Joe? During the last war, Kemal Bayar was lost when the trawler he was on went down off Sicily. He was sunk by a German plane. Kemal was married. He sent his pregnant wife and sister to America. And what happened to them? The sister returned. I met her in a small hill town. She told me that Kemal Bayar's wife had died and the child was left for adoption. I begin to understand. I have to see this through, Ned. Orders or no orders? Of course. If Ned doesn't see it, I do, Joe. But but it's preposterous. This whole thing is, is, is wild. I don't believe it. I won't believe it. The Smiths... Leave them out of this, Ned, please. Go and get some rest, Joe. I'm not tired. But I will go home and wait for Mr. Hunter to pay me a visit. Joe, the police... I don't want them to know anything. I don't want Hunter scared off. He knows who Marco Hestos is. He knows his new name, whatever it might be. And I know he was born Kemal Bayar. Joe, you really suspect... Yes, I'm afraid I do. <laughs> if it's true, I'll... I'll be kind of notorious, won't I? Ah, bunk. You're Joe Smith and always will be to us. Yeah, but maybe not to the old woman and her family in the hills above Nicosia. <laughs> And so an investigation into the life of a notorious criminal takes two grotesque turns. Marco Hestos may still be alive, and Joe Smith accepts an alliance with Mr. Hunter to blackmail Marco. What began as a search has turned into a hunt. A coincidence is an event that is remarkable because of a lack of apparent causal connection. But is there such a thing? Everything has a cause. And the cause for a so-called coincidence may go back a lifetime and then suddenly appear. In Act Three, we will continue to follow Joe Smith's odyssey. The interest in our personal past history has become pronounced in recent years for the curious reason that we would like to know where we came from. I think it's true that we come into the world with the mark of our descent, a roundabout way of saying heredity. Joe Smith is an orphan. I doubt if he gave much thought to his origin, but now the subject seems to have been thrust upon him. He has just returned from dinner. Ah, oh, come in. Thank you. I've been expecting you. All right, I'll cooperate with you, Hunter. Splendid. I've assumed that. You're pretty sure of yourself, aren't you? Very sure. How did you know that Marco Hestos was still alive? 
Because I followed Roger Trush to New York several months ago. And who's he? He was an unimportant member of the smuggling ring. And? He found Marco. Who is Marco now? What does he do? After we've collected the money, I'll tell you. And Trush? He's the man the police found in the bay. <laughs> An easy matter for Marco. <laughs> you guys with your demands on Marco don't fare so well, do you? First Bazaar, then Trush, and now you. And now me. Uh, with your help. What's the plot? I've been in touch with Marco. I've given him several days to collect the money. Tonight at ten o'clock, he will drop it in the telephone booth next to the men's room in Nino's restaurant on City Island. We will arrive there at 9.30. I will wait outside for Marco to arrive. At ten o'clock, you will go to the booth and collect the money, join me in my rented car, and we'll return to the city. Huh. Just like that, huh? I foresee no problems. You're dealing with a killer, Mr. Hunter. I oh, know that. And you expect him to drop off the money and wave goodbye. Huh. You've made your play, he'll make his. He'll hire a gun, and before we take off, we'll be shot. When we drive away, Marco will be in the back seat with me. Covered. You come out with a briefcase with the money, and we leave. We put Marco out in midtown. And then you uh, vanish, as you put it, and I go home, huh? In a few days or a week, I'm wiped out. I'm a sitting duck for Marco's mob. You will be until your final story is printed. Once you reveal Marco's true identity, the fact that he's alive and is a successful businessman, you're out of danger. He will disappear. The danger to you is the next few hours, say, until you've written your story. Mm, meaning I'd better hide out, huh? Or leave the city. Okay, Hunter. When and where do you pick me up? Nine o'clock at 62nd in Madison. And what if I report this caper to the police? They'd uh, nail you and Marco at Nino's. But you wouldn't be alive to report it, Mr. Smith. Are you eager to become a martyr? Yeah. Okay, I'll see you at nine. I hope you're not underestimating Marco Hestos, pal. <laughs> We are perfectly safe, aren't we, Marco? <laughs> this is cheap melodrama, Mr. Hunter. I know you too well, Marco. I agree to your terms. You have the money. For which I thank you. This would please Etienne Brissard and Raja Trush, eh? You have an assistant, Mr. Hunter. Your biographer. The writer Joe Smith. I've read his articles. Very thorough. Except for the one about Nicosia. It was there you should have discovered that I was born Kemal Bayar. I uh, found that out. Ah, but you did not write it. I didn't write about your sister either. Or the others in your family. Why not? You wish them dead? Uh-huh. A point. I thank you for that. Where do we go from New York, Mr. Hunter? What a foolish question, I ask. You will not leave New York. Marco has many eyes. They are everywhere, at the airports, at the docks. And I have many faces. You don't frighten me. You, Mr. Smith, as an accomplice of uh, Mr. Hunter, how do you feel? Me? Oh, just great. I never felt better in my life. <laughs> Why do you insist on our coming back to my place, Hunter? Because I promised to give you information to complete your story. If I got a chance to write it. You heard Marco. I said nothing. He didn't have to. The man was Kemal Bayar. Then Marco Hestos. And when his trawler was sunk in the war, Marco escaped and became a spy, an assassin, a smuggler of dope all over Europe and the Middle East, from Tripoli to East Berlin. Yeah, I know most of that. But who is he now? After he killed Etienne Brissard, he became Mario Festis. On his new passport, he's an American. He's here in New York as an importer. Do you know Harrison, New York? Sure, it's in Westchester. Well, that's where he lives. On a large estate. He's very respected. I told you I'd fill out the story about Marco. Well, I have. But I cannot permit you to write your final chapter. And now what's your angle? Marco lives. 
He has paid me a substantial amount of money. For blackmail? No. Money owed to me. Go on. I may want more. If you expose Marco, you dry up my source of money. So you kill me and... And then what? That's the end. Huh. Now, you really think you could get away with that? I mean, are you, are you so stupid, Hunter, you don't, know, you don't know that I anticipated something like this? Huh? This entire apartment has been bugged. Our entire conversation has been heard by the New York Police Department. I... I don't believe you. Go ahead, Hunter. Pull the trigger. Oh, I, I'm shot. What? Mark Hell. Christad. Rush. And finally you, Hunter. <laughs> I would have preferred a knife. Well, we meet again, Mr. Smith. Before I kill you, <laughs> why hesitate? Well, you have done my family a service. So have you. Hmm. Explain. I think you're dead. That made them joyous. Uh, you know why. You sent your wife and child to the United States and abandoned them and went on a rampage of crime all over Europe. Your sister returned to Nicosia, but your wife died. The child, your son, Kemal Bayar, was let out for adoption. Now, do you deny any of this? I did not know what happened. I've lived in the shadows. Yeah, while your family lived in near poverty in the hills. I could not return. I sent money. <laughs> Very little. How do you know all about my family? Look at me. Go on, take a good look. I have not before seen you under full light. Well? It's incredible. You... You are... My name is Joe Smith. I was adopted by two fine people. But... But... Yeah, but, Marco... But my birth name was Bayar. And I looked so much like you when you were my age that your family thought I was coming home. They told you who you are. They tried. I corrected them. I was Joe Smith. Then I got to thinking about it, and I knew the truth. And you know it, too. You are... You are my son. I wish you were dead. I wish you'd been the man found in the bay. And maybe I'd never have discovered the truth. Oh, good Lord. Yeah, now let's get on with another murder. Go on, it's routine. I won't resist. I... I would never harm you. Then give yourself up to the police. They're waiting outside my door. They know everything that's been said in here. What will happen to you? I'll uh, be marked for life. I have much money. Stained with blood. Keep it for your defense. I have none. You saw me kill Hunter. You saved me, you could get life. I do not intend to rot in prison. Oh, then make a break for it. You could be killed resisting arrest. You have no feeling for me. So much so, Father, that I cannot express it. Goodbye, my son. Goodbye. What a horrible ordeal. You had us half dead with fear, Joe. We're proud of you, Joe. Hell, I'm so proud I'll give you the newspaper. <laughs> it's not yours, Ned. No, no, I, I, I don't want anything. Uh, just my job, if I still have it. Now what? I am the son of that... A wrong... You're Joe Smith, period. He's dead. He left by the fire escape. The police challenged him. He started firing. He's very, very dead. Yeah. That's good news. We heard it all as it was being recorded. I'll, uh, I'll write it up first thing tomorrow. Charlie's already written most of the story. The lead on page one for tomorrow's paper. I've covered your conversation with Hunter about the trip to City Island and what happened at the restaurant. All I've got to add is what happened here... Half an hour ago. I'm going to make you a hero, Joe. He is a hero. What, uh, what's the reaction going to be, Ned? Sensational. Yeah. Yeah, that is going to be hard to live with. What is? Well, think of the implications. 
International criminal trapped by his son and shot down, resisting uh, Wait arrest. a minute. Nothing like that, Joe. You don't think I'd include anything about you being the son of Bayar? But it's the truth. So what? You're Joe Smith. No one, the police included, will ever know that you're by our son. But I am. What about your adopted parents? They're proud of you. Do they know, or would they suspect who you were when you were adopted? No. No, I asked them many times. I know I'm adopted, but that's all we know. <laughs> I was proud of it until I stumbled on the truth. Now I... Well, I'm kind of ashamed... For their sakes. Rubbish. They brought you up straight and tall and honest, and that's what you are. You're no more a buyer than I'm the grandson of Jack the Ripper. Look, write the last installment and tell everything that happened. All you admit is Marco's discovery that you're the son he abandoned 30 years ago in New York. He spared your life because you protected his family in Cyprus. Now, what's wrong with that? Nothing. It's perfect. What do you say? I order you to forget your connection with Bayar. And now we're going out to celebrate. Okay. Hey, uh, uh, w w one question, though. Uh, how did Marco... How did he plant himself in your room? Yeah. Ned? You dropped him off in the 70s. He took a taxi. An unmarked police car followed him to your place here. The place was wired and swarming with cops. Marco appeared and let himself in. Well, why didn't the cops grab it? For what reason? To them, Marco was Mario Festus, a prominent businessman. The police still thought Marco had been fished from Pelham Bay. They needed his confession on tape, his admission of who he was. You were the bait. Now, well, let's get out of here. This is an evening I'd like to forget. Our story made a point, and a good one, about environment. Joe Smith was brought up in a good one, and it was more important than his heredity. But we cannot deny heredity, and so I'll make this point. Marco, I'll call him that, was brilliant but evil. His natural son, Joe Smith, is talented but good. Heredity furnished the inherent ability. Environment shaped it. I'll return shortly. There are incorrigibles. No question about that. There are also perfectly normal persons whose direction in life is often determined by the conditions under which they live. They are the ones we should help. For our own sake. If we don't, we, the public, are guilty of waste. Our cast included Paul Hecht, Nat Poland, William Griffiths, and Ray Owens. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Enjoy this episode of CBS Radio Mystery Theater. If you enjoyed this and want to hear more, please subscribe to this channel. You can also visit my other YouTube channel by searching Mr. Brian McCarthy in the YouTube search bar. Until then, thanks for listening.